Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Birgit Gopal. I am a project management and outreach trainee at Euroclear. And I would like to welcome you all to the Sharing European Histories online self-guided course. The course is part of the Sharing European Histories project, which is an initiative of Euroclear and the Evans Foundation. Throughout the project, five teaching strategies have been developed by a team of teachers, researchers, and curriculum developers. They are currently available in nine different European languages and five more languages are following very soon. During the self-guided course, we will dive into each of these five different teaching strategies with local teachers and experts across Europe to see how they have used the teaching strategies um, to form lesson plans and implemented them in the classroom. In this session, we'll take a close look at the teaching strategy on history of ideas. The full title is Studying Histories of Ideas to Learn About Continuity and Change. Uh, this was developed by Juan Carlos. And today we are joined by uh, Lilia uh, Katsrian, who will take us through her lesson plan, um, how she has been inspired by the teaching uh, strategy. So um, I'm going to tell her a little bit um, about, about Lilia. Uh, Lilia has been a civic teacher at high school and also a university professor of philosophy. Uh, since 2010, she's been a teacher trainer of civics um, in the Armenian Center for Democratic Education or at Civitas. And uh, we were very grateful that in 2017, she was a participant in Strategies for Inclusion, uh, where she developed three teaching uh, activities, which you can find on Historiana. These are the right to be forgotten, freedom of speech, the Tinker case, and love where you live. Thank you, Lilia, for joining us. Thank you, Bridget. I appreciate the kind introduction. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be here with you and to share the work I have done. Thank you. I will now share uh, with you the PowerPoint. Here we go. So in addition to these uh, five sessions, these five recorded sessions on the strategies, there will also be three live reflection sessions uh, on the 18th of November, the 2nd of December, and also the 16th of December. Um, this you can all find uploaded on our YouTube channel, on our Euroclear YouTube channel. And um, you can find more information about the Sharing European Histories course, the project over on our project page on our website. So without further ado, I shall hand over the floor to Lilia, who will present her lesson plan on history of ideas. Lilia. Oh, and before, before, we, uh, before I do that, I think it is useful to um, quickly go over the, the inspiration for the idea and uh, what it summarizes. So the strategy is primarily aimed at teaching the evolution of widely shared ideas uh, by locating these ideas within a geographical context and also within the general chronological thinking. Uh, it will help students to contextualize uh, these contemporary prevailing ideas. The strategy also allows the students to discuss some controversial issues uh, that have marked the development of the main ideas that are prevalent in Europe nowadays. Okay, uh, Lilia, the floor is yours. Thank you. So as you have already mentioned, I designed a lesson plan based on the history of idea strategy. And for doing this, I chose one of the most important and influential ideas I used to teach in my civic lessons, and that is the idea of legitimacy. First, I would like to present some basic details about the lesson. Uh, the lesson can be implemented more or less in 90 minutes, and I believe it best fits for high school students' knowledge and skills. However, here in Armenia, uh, we teach about legitimacy in grade 11, so it depends on the national curriculum. 
Uh, on this slide, you can see the aim and objectives of the lesson. The lesson aims to enable students to engage with evolutionary idea of legitimacy, how it, it is developed throughout the history. And to read these goals, uh, students will, first of all, define how legitimacy was perceived in different periods of history and identify the sources of legitimacy where the right to, to rule comes from. And also describe what can be deemed as illegitimate power or leader, reveal historical events and personalities affected the idea's evolution. Uh, students will draw conclusions on the controversial issues concerning the idea. And finally, they will create the timeline of the idea's evolution. Can we move on to the next slide, please? Yeah. So how are students going to read these outcomes? My lesson has four activities. First, students uh, exchange their background knowledge on the idea of legitimacy, and they will have 15 minutes for this activity. In this activity, students will work in groups and write down on a sheet of paper what comes to their mind when they think about legitimacy. Then they collectively decide on the five main features of legitimacy and present them to other groups. At the end of this exercise, uh, the class will come up with the final top features of legitimacy. So they will somehow define what uh, the idea of legitimacy stands for. Then uh, second activity comes uh, and it is about getting to know the events and it will last for uh, 35 minutes. So after students have defined what legitimacy stands for in terms of the right to rule and how the power is uh, used, they, then they will assign to work with events. So each student will read an event and give a three minute presentation to the class on their findings. And during this presentation, the rest of the students will fill out the worksheet uh, that you can see on this slide. Uh, they fill out the main information about the events, which are historical period and location, the sources of legitimacy, who gains or loses in the result of the change. Then students organize the events chronologically. And here, teachers should explain them that they may group some events into historical periods. And then later, they use all this information to create the ideas timeline. And for this worksheet, I use the one that Juan provides in his example of the strategy. And I made some changes to adapt it for my lesson. The third activity is creating timeline infographics. Students will be divided again into groups and will create timeline infographics to present the idea's evolution across the time. In my understanding, visualization is a key for history of ideas teaching strategy. And that's why I assume that creating timeline infographics is an activity that fits well for this strategy. On the other hand, I like the idea that later on I can use those infographics created by my students as teaching resources like handouts for my other lessons. Uh, some words about infographics. Uh, to me, infographics are a fun and effective way to display information. Uh, and my students know how to create infographics using several websites. Indeed, I uh, usually use Canva online tool because it is very simple and allows to create a variety of designs, even if you don't have any design knowledge or skills. Also, it provides a huge range of uh, timeline templates. So very useful. Uh, however, this activity can be done uh, in different ways. For example, students can draw timeline infographics on a sheet of paper using color markers. 
And if it is, it is the first time students work in, with infographics, it would be useful to have some examples of timeline infographics and to show them to students. Um, well, it is also important uh, that throughout this exercise, teacher facilitate group work by asking students to explain what they want to present in their infographics and how. For example, what might be different phases of ideas evolution and how they want to name them or what might be the most significant events and how they can highlight or emphasize them with their infographics. Perhaps students will need also help to decide on the shape of timeline. And we can explain that timeline can be presented by vertical and horizontal lines and with different curves. We can also tell our students that they can use different colors for different phases of the ideas progression and so on. So we can give them some help. And after students create the infographics, uh, they present them by placing infographics in different corners of the classroom. Then they take time, walk around and observe the posters. And this is called a gallery walk. Then we move to the next activity. Uh, the final activity is the uh, the discussion. Uh, the next slide, please, Bridget. Mm -hmm. Can we move on to the next slide? Have uh, the next slide uh, has some sample questions that we can use to stimulate the discussion. Uh, students will have a discussion on what factors influence the the evolution of the idea what was legitimacy about in different historical times and about the most significant changes or setbacks of the idea. And finally, how the idea is popular nowadays. And by doing this, students will somehow summarize what they have learned from the lesson and from the pre previous activities. Uh, so these are the four activities of my lesson. And now I'm going to speak about the events. On the next slide, we can see some examples of uh, the events I collected. Uh, first of all, uh, the idea of legitimacy, as I have already mentioned, has geographically diverse roots as it concerns all countries that existed and exist in the world. And also it covers the entire history timeline from the very ancient time to the present days. I must say that uh, it was a real challenge to compile a good collection of events especially since I'm not a history, but a social studies teacher. And I may say that uh, if another teacher were in my place, I believe that the list of events would be different, meaning that uh, some key events would remain the same, but some would be replaced by others uh, based on maybe teacher's preferences or the content they teach in the frame of the national curriculum. Uh, for this lesson, I have chosen 10 events, not more because I was thinking to include as many as could be done within the lesson time. And I tried to include events from different historical periods, starting from ancient times to the present days, at the same time from different parts of the world, as many as possible, but with a little emphasis on the European history. And there are some examples on this slide of uh, absolute monarchy from ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, China, and Middle Ages Europe. Some are not on this slide that I 
mentioned, uh, events from enlightenment period, such as foundation of democracy, democratic states and events that took place in the 20th and 21st centuries, among which I have included key events and turning points to show the pace of the change. And for instance, the story about Magna Carta and 17th century democratic revolutions are some examples that you can see on this slide. Plus, uh, I have included uh, some publications that hugely affected the idea's development. And uh, those publications are works uh, belong to Enlightenment philosophers, Max Weber, and the contemporary political theorist, Arthur Applebaum. And by including uh, these sources, I wanted to give my students more insights for discussion, and especially for drawing conclusions on how the idea of legitimacy is popular nowadays and in what context. So it seems this is all about my lesson plan, Bridget. Thank you very much, Lilia, for presenting uh, your lesson plan. I'm sure plenty of uh, people are also intrigued about uh, these events that you've selected that you can see here. Uh, these events act almost, well, they are kind of sources. They are different, um, different components which make up the idea of, uh, of legitimacy. Essentially, uh, having like a strong geographical Kind of spread is is crucial to the strategy so it's very good that it's uh it's insured here um and i'm curious you mentioned uh that different teachers may like to include different events and mm -hmm. these uh events you've chosen are uh kind of very true to your teachings and being a civic teacher mm -hmm. um which other events do you think that uh, would have been included by other teachers? Um, I cannot mention uh, anything like exact events yeah. uh, to include. For example, uh, maybe uh, some more uh, examples of setbacks uh, of the ideology legitimacy can be included. I uh, use only one example uh, about dictatorship. And um, I think uh, they can be more uh, from totalitarian uh, examples uh, of tyranny. Yeah. But I think here you have a really great kind of spread of examples. So, um, and also across time periods. Um, what we will do now is um, we'll go on to a little bit of a QA and a um, about the teaching strategy, about the lesson plan which you've created um, in more practical terms. So now you're very well acquainted with the teaching strategy, you know it very well. Uh, would you say that the teaching strategy and also the lesson plan are easy to use for educators? Um, speaking about the strategy, uh, when I first read it, uh, even the title alone uh, sounded fascinating to me. Let's say because uh, it is from my scope of interest. Uh, I used to teach uh, and I love teaching about ideas the most in my civic uh, lessons. And uh, so when I first read it, it was quite clear what the goal is and how, through which steps uh, the creator, uh, Juan, sees that the goal can be reached. Mm. So I must admit that the strategy is well structured and well explained. Also in some places it uh, includes um, valuable advice to consider and I felt no difficulties in understanding how I can adapt it on a specific idea and uh, to create a lesson plan. 
And that's why uh, it didn't take me long to create a lesson plan. No. But speaking about events, that was very time consuming since, uh, as I have already said, I'm not a history teacher. It went slowly and was also very challenging. Yeah. And uh, I did some research, uh, talked to my history uh, teacher colleagues. Yeah. I invested a lot of work and time uh, to have what can be deemed as uh, an effective list of events uh, for my lesson. So it took me many hours to find events. Um, actually, some of them I knew, but some I discovered for myself. Yeah. And it took time also to decide which event to include and which ones to leave out and what more to add and so on. But uh, in, the end, I, in the end, I came up with 10 uh, events. So, and I think this is uh, not because the idea I choose, chose, uh, since uh, it would be more or less the same for civic teachers, because I am, I am not sure how it is in other countries, but here in Armenia, uh, the content we teach in civic lessons is mostly detached from its historical and geographical context. Okay. Uh, like to summarize, I didn't uh, take much time uh, to create a lesson plan, but, it, but the, uh, to clear, uh, collect a list of events, it was really time consuming. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's um, something to think about is that uh, it's quite nice that the, that the lesson plan you can create quite quickly, uh, but sometimes it's the collecting of sources which takes yes. a little bit longer. Um, did you find that the lesson plan which is included in the strategy uh, supported your understanding of the strategy, um, that it also helped you to create your own uh -huh. lesson plan? Yeah, much then. It was very useful to look through the example that Juan created. Especially, it helped me to understand what kind of events to collect and how to bring them into one text format. Yeah. And also, uh, I like the worksheet very much, uh, the table where students fill in some basic information from events and its questions. I mean, the questions about the gain, who gains or loses uh, in the result of the change. As you have seen, I included this worksheet uh, in my lesson with some changes. Yeah, so, yeah. because I like one of the activities. So that's really great that you can use something which is already in the sample lesson plan and directly incorporate it in your own lesson. And I think it's, it's great that you managed to actually adapt, um, yeah, adapt kind of, the lesson plan to suit your needs. You say that in civic education, you don't usually link things to historical or kind of geographical uh, kind of contexts, but that is really important for this teaching strategy. And actually it worked really well to do that. Um, so I think that puts another spin on civics education as a whole. Um, when you were busy applying the strategy to your local, well, to your kind of idea. Um, what challenges did you encounter maybe in terms of accessibility to resources or if you were trying to make the lesson plan suitable for uh, different levels of education? Uh, I have already said that the strategy is quite challenging. Uh, the challenge I faced first was related to what I did to choose. Well, when I was thinking on what idea to choose, I had several options in my mind. Some had local context and were related to Armenian history, while others were global. And weighing out pros and cons, I decided to choose a global idea that has a historical significance, large geography and diverse interpretations, uh, I knew that it would be quite challenging, but also it could give more thoughts on the strategy. Mm 
Yeah, that's why I decided to choose a global idea. And from here comes the challenge. The thing is that when with this scope of idea, similar events uh, took place in different parts of the world in the same time period. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult to choose between them to understand which can be the best example or representative, uh, let's say the best example of absolute monarchy. Uh, when you cannot point to the very beginning, and it is also about a big time period, like uh, many, many centuries. Yeah. And that's why I think uh, it would have been very helpful and would have saved my time if I had some more guidance on this matter from uh, historians, uh, from history teachers. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, challenge I faced while implementing this strategy uh, is connected to the nature of ideas. So as we know, ideas are some sort of generalizations, like abstractions, and they are created by ignor ignoring all specific information and including uh, including only some key common characteristics. And uh, on the other hand, while searching and finding events, uh, which are obviously historical moments with specific context, and sometimes described by text with no care, uh, let's say, that maybe someone someday would need to understand what they tell about that idea of legitimacy in my case. And so while dealing with this specific historical moment, I found myself constantly questioning if it is still the same idea in, in that concrete time and space. Mm. So I assume that maybe it depends on the idea of whether we encounter this challenge or not, but if it is about a very distant past, I think probably it would be always like that. Yeah. Uh, another challenge may be uh, maybe uh, we can face uh, when uh, implementing this lesson in the classroom. The thing is that uh, most probably students will uh, think that legitimacy is a democratic uh, term, uh, meaning that it is really related only to democratic countries. Uh, actually, I saw this disposition among my previous students and also some history teachers among some history teachers I talked to when preparing my lesson. And I think this is something that uh, needs to be changed. And I hope maybe this lesson may help. And uh, so uh, those challenges I faced uh, when I was working on the strategy. Yeah, I think um, what you say about kind of like selecting events and that that was a challenge, kind of including and excluding is a, is a, like a problem that history teachers face on a day to day basis, because there is so much history and there is only so little space in the curriculum to actually teach it. Um, but it's very interesting what you say about the idea specifically of legitimacy. And the fact that that is not, it's often linked to like democracies, like you say, but um, you included one event about the divine right to rule. Um, and that that's a very good example of how legitimacy can also be in that context. And that also helped to form the definition of legitimacy. So um, yeah, the events which you pick are very crucial. Um, but I think that they show that legitimacy has changed. The very definition of it has changed. So if you look back in time, it's not the same as what it, what it is now, um, but it is still this idea which was forming the whole time. Um, I have another question for you. 
about um, this teaching strategy. How does it compare to other teaching strategies which you may have used in the past or maybe used as a teacher trainer? I developed a lesson that you all mentioned in the introduction where I used the strategy of teaching with case studies. And one of the activities of my lesson aims to reveal ideas that are behind that cases. And it seems my lesson, which by the way is called, that you mentioned freedom of speech thinker case, uh, has some things in common with uh, the history of idea strategy. And when I was working on my lesson, two things were uh, the, more, uh, the focus of my attention, which are engaging students and stimulating their thinking. And I must admit that in terms of those two, history of idea strategy is an outstanding practice. I believe that uh, the strategy can be used both by history and also civic teachers, and they can adapt it to their teaching content. Even though this strategy is quite challenging, I think both civic and history teachers would enjoy working with it as much as I did. And uh, in the end, uh, both students and teachers will benefit from it. Um, yeah. This strategy is, uh, in my understanding, is uh, that kind of uh, teaching tools or approaches that furthers uh, students uh, and also teachers' understanding of human ideas and history altogether. And also it brings to the table some interesting and important discussions. Yeah, I think, uh, like you say, it can be adapted even for history and for civic teachers, yeah. which makes it that yeah, there's already good kind of advantage of the strategy. Um, if you were to change it or improve it, maybe a couple of years down the line, are there things which you'd like to change, adapt? Uh, perhaps uh, I can suggest one more thing because I have already mentioned uh, what I would like to uh, see more in this strategy, uh, the guide guidance uh, on uh, the idea, how to choose them and uh, how to choose events. Mm -hmm. and one more thing to add is um, in case there is, according uh, so about my lesson plan, I would like to say something more. Uh, in case uh, there is no chance uh, to have 90 minutes for uh, this lesson, uh, which is a double session, uh, double session or double lesson time. Yeah. It still can be done within one lesson. If students could have uh, opportunity to know the events in advance, uh, it could be a homework assignment for students to read and um, to read the events and highlight the main information. And I think this can work in this way for one lesson as well. Yeah, no, perfect. Yeah, as you say, you have now created a lesson plan which can be used for two lessons, but it's nice that it can also be used for one. Um, do you have any last uh, yeah, gems of advice or any tips uh, that you wanna share with teachers who now listening to your lesson plan would like to use the lesson plan in class? Um, I think I have already said what uh, was the focus of my attention. And uh, I think I shared all my thoughts already. And just to add that, uh, thank you again, uh, Bridget, for this opportunity to share with you the lesson plan I have created and my thoughts also on the history of idea strategy. 
And uh, I look forward to seeing what comes next. Thank you so much, Lilia, for presenting the lesson plan and also for creating it. It will be published on the EuroClear website and you can find uh, the information and links for this uh, in the description uh, below the video. Um, so I'm really excited to go on and see how teachers will be able to use it. Um, for more information, you can always visit our project page uh, or you can uh, yeah, contact us directly. Um, thank you very much again, Lilia. It was a pleasure and uh, goodbye. Thank you, Bridget. Goodbye.